Yo, what's going on, Lutz Stars? It's your boy Samson X here. And do excuse my messy front room here. I just like to try and switch up the locations as much as I can so you guys don't get bored. So if you don't want me to do it again, say, yo, dickhead, don't do it again. Anyway, you know, there's many people that ask me, yo, Samson, what do you do? What do you train for? Why do you lift weights, huh? Do you compete? The oh, fuck no, come on now. You a power lifter? Come on now. Do you at least play a sport like rugby where you need a decent amount of size and strength? No. I'll tell you what I am. I'm a... Natural Recreational Bodybuilder. Oh yeah. It's got a nice ring to it, hasn't it? And that's a term I coined myself because... I don't train for anything. I don't compete in anything. I don't play any sports. I personally just like to train to... Well, to put it short, look good in and out of clothes. I'll be honest with you, and mainly for my overall health too, you know, why not? And along the way, I've learnt so much, uh, you know, so much trial and error, building the muscle that I have built to go from where I used to be to where I am now. And just so I can give you a perspective of the example I'm trying to set, boom, there's me at the age of 19, right? Skinny fat in the before photo, and afterwards was just the other day, right? Lean, relatively lean, decent amount of size, you know, still room for hell, hell of a lot of room for improvement. However, I'm a hell of a lot better. You can't deny that. So I feel it's gotten to a point where I am now a good enough influence upon those who want to start building muscle. And if you've hit a plateau, carry on building and making gains from there on out. So today I present to you no cookie cutter, no carbon copy bullshit. And without further ado, in no particular order, I present to you my top 15 muscle building tips. Let's get it. Have you a long-term goal? Basically, what are you training for, right? If you want to train to eventually somewhere down the line be a bodybuilder, or if you want to train to eventually somewhere down the line be a powerlifter or a strongman, or if you're training for football, or if you're training for rugby, if you're training for, even if you're training like, like me, just to, to look good in and out of clothes, and have your overall health intact, right? So before you even set foot in the gym, or you feel like you're lost, you have to know exactly what it is that you're training for, right? In other words, that could be interpreted as train with a purpose, right? What's your purpose? Like I say, is your purpose to be a bodybuilder? Is your purpose to be a strongman slash powerlifter? Is your purpose to rugby or is your purpose football? Is your purpose basketball? You know, so on and so forth, you get the point. So basically, you need to know what you're training for. Or if you, if your purpose, like I say, if your purpose is looking good in and out of clothes, right? Know your purpose, and when you train with purpose, it means so much more. And you will, it's like a psychological thing too. You will actually see more gains and get much more f fulfillment out of your gym sessions, right? So just know what you're training for. All right, number two, have a daily plan. And what I mean by this is, don't just start wandering into the gym like a lost soul, right? You just walk in there without a plan, you'd be like, mm, I want to do some half-hearted sit-ups. Then I'm going to walk over, mm, what do I do next? Uh, uh, do some half-hearted dumbbell curls, then I move into shoulder press because I saw an athlete do it on Instagram and I don't know what I'm doing. Fuck all that shit, man, right? Have you a plan? And what I mean by this, I'll take myself for an example. I'm not saying you specifically. Me personally, I do push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs. That's mine. So if I'm doing push days, so for instance, I do chest, shoulders, and triceps, right? I know in my head, I'm going to be doing chest, shoulders, and triceps on a Monday, right? And I know I'll start with dumbbell, uh, chest press, then I'll jump onto the chest machine and do some singles for, ex for explosive sets and you know pyramid sets and all that. Then I'm going to jump onto cables, finish up on that. Uh, you know, then I know I'm, I'm going to hit at least three 
exercises per muscle. Then I'll move on to, I don't know, I'll move on to shoulders then. Then I'll move on to shoulder dumbbell press, standing dumbbell press. Then I'll move on to lateral raises to hit my side delts. Then I'll move on to... Ah, oh, fucking hell, man. I forgot to train rear delts this week. Guys, don't forget to train your rear delts, man. But that is part of my protocol. So you get where I'm coming from, right? Now, even if you want to train one muscle a day, you can do that. Even though I, I must say that isn't really going to help your game because you need to be hitting your muscles at least twice a week. So if you want to sort yourself out a push-pull routine or an upper body, lower body routine or... If you want to do one push movement and one pull movement a day, that's up to you. So, best thing I can say to you is just have a plan before you even get into the gym. Because when you just wander in there, like a lost soul, you are leaving a lot of gains on the table, seriously. So, have a daily plan. Number three, protein, baby, protein. Getting your diet on track. Right, so you gotta work it out like this. You need at least a gram of protein for every pound that you weigh, right? So if you're 190 pounds, you need 190 grams of protein to start seeing gains, right? Now, I'll be honest with you. Where I went wrong, right, is I was doing a gram of protein per kilogram that I weigh. You know, because here in the UK, we weigh ourselves in kilograms, right? Right, beforehand, I was about 90 kilograms, right? Because I'm a height, I'm, I'm six foot two. Now, so basically, I was getting 90 grams of protein a day, and I was wondering why I didn't make any gains for the past few years. Up until fairly recent, about a year ago, is when I really started exploding. Like, my arms were skinny before, and now they have decent size, right? I was relatively skinny fat, like, like, like you see. So, when I started adopting that method, boom, I started making gains. So don't fucking be an idiot like me, right? <laughs> getting confused, thinking it's kilograms instead of your pounds. So make sure you're getting that protein in you. That is the building blocks for your muscle, right? Protein synthesis can't occur without protein. It goes without saying if you think about it. And the second thing I'm gonna tie into this is your diet, right? First thing I'm gonna tell you is stop fucking saying the word diet, right? Cut that word out of your vocabulary because you may have heard this on other bodybuilding slash fitness channels and I'm going to re reiterate it now. A diet, right? What do you do with a diet? You hop on a diet, right? And when you hop on something, there's an implication that you're going to hop off eventually, right? So that's why so many people fail diets. That's why so many people, when they get on these bullshit fad diets, they just start failing and they stop seeing gains and they start gaining weight back and they just don't see results, right? So a little mind hack for you is call it your lifestyle or your nutrition plan or your eating plan, right? This is my how I eat, right? It's not a diet. How I eat is how I eat. My nutrition plan is my nutrition plan. Right? It doesn't have to be strict and fucking starving yourself and eating rabbit food and all that bullshit, man. Right? You can have a little fun with it. Just as long as you you get the nutrients in you. Whereas like getting your diet on track is, dare I say, probably the most important thing in muscle building. Right? And if you've got a shitty diet, everybody knows at this point you can't out-train a bad diet. Right? So, I didn't even need to tell you really. Diet. Get it unlocked. Right, number four, never neglect your compound movements. All right, so when we talk compound movements, everyone thinks of, you know, the big three, which is squats, deadlifts, and bench press. Surprise, surprise, I don't deadlift. And my back is actually, by far, my best body part, as you can see right here. And I don't bench either. And I used to have no definition on my chest. So I just stick to dumbbells and machinery. That's for me personally, you know, you can get into whole long paragraph arguments about, oh, do bench, do dumbbells and machinery, like, right, whatever works for you, works for you, right? And I personally class dumbbell chest press as a compound movement, right? Because I can still overload on that. I can still go as heavy as I need to. And I personally feel it's best for me because I can start targeting my weaker pec, right, which is my left pec. I feel I always get weaker there and I, I, I just feel it's a lot better for me. And I, I, do, I class that as a compound movement. 
because I can go heavy. However, like you see me doing here, I still do squats, right? I still incorporate those squats. And that's pretty much the only compound movement I do out of like, you know, the big three. However, I think people, a lot of people get misinformed right when they start looking at like you know gym and fitness content and when they first hear hypertrophy is like the way to go but you don't just want to rely on hypertrophy alone what i can say has worked for me might not always work for you however it has worked for a lot of people i've told to incorporate compound movements back into their protocol so you can't really just rely on hypertrophy alone you gotta add at least one heavy progressive overload sort of movement that you can really like bang out that weight on and that is one thing out of the many that is going to help you start seeing gains number five train explosively from what i've found explosive training is really where the muscle building for me has has come into play right like as you see me doing here me personally i like to do up on the chest press machine and really bang it out you know i go up not too heavy but you know i, I like to pile on a few plates and just go as heavy as I can, almost, but obviously like not too heavy, heavy enough where I can rep at least about 8 reps comfortably and then I'll come back down, I'll do pyramid sets. However, when I get to the bottom, I like to bang it out explosively and come back down nice and slow on the negative. Bang it out explosively and come back down, you get what I'm saying? And that explosiveness has really put some definition and some size into my chest. And explosive movements doesn't just go for chest press, obviously. You can do it on a few other things, but there's few few things that you don't really need to train explosively on. Like you can figure that out for yourself. So, but where you can incorporate explosive training, do it. Because if you want to look like an athlete, you gotta train like an athlete, right? Okay, number six. Now you better fucking pay attention when I tell you this, right? Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. Check your fucking ego at the door. Real talk. Like, if you're built like a bag of Kinects, don't be coming into the gym thinking you're gonna lift big boy weights because it doesn't work like that, right? You need to stay in your lane until you're ready to move over. I know you see the big boys pushing big weights, you have to wait to earn your stripes. You gotta earn your wings, baby. You feel me? Like I say, you need to stay in your lane until you're ready to move over. Think of it like you're driving down the road, right? You have to stay in your lane because there's too much traffic on that side, right? And when there's, there's, there's not any traffic there, then you're ready to move over. You signal and you move over. Obviously, you do the maneuver. Mirror the signal, move over. It's the same when you're coming to the gym. When you're not ready to move up, then you're not ready. And um, plus, you know, people aren't thinking about you and looking at you the way you think they're looking at you, right? No one gives a fuck. People are way too wrapped up in, in doing their thing to even give a fuck. If they are looking at you, it's probably because they're admiring, they're admiring, right? Like you've probably heard this before and you're gonna hear it again, right? Your muscle does not know the number on the side of the dumbbell. It only knows tension. And if you're giving it the right amount of tension, then you're going to start to see gains. You don't have to be making sure that weight gets up there, right? Like if, for example, if you're doing dumbbell chest press and your, your, your ego gets involved, right? You're going to start incorporating every fucking muscle you've got to get that up there when there's no need for that, right? We're working chest, not all over the body. And like I say, if you don't leave your ego at the door and you wanna you wanna press big boy weight, and say so for example if it's bench press, right? And you wanna press big boy weight and your ego has gotten ahead of you, if you fuck up, people are gonna laugh at you and you're not gonna leave it down, right? So what's the point? Check your fucking ego at the door. Okay, number seven. If you come to the gym with a training partner, or you train on your own and you ask for a spot, make sure they know what the fuck they're doing. Okay, I'll give you a quick little example of what I'm on about, right? But one time I was doing arms, I was training biceps, and I was doing my I was doing my thing on the, on the preacher curl, right? And I wanted to, I wanted to do a little bit of progressive overload, and so I piled the bar full of plates and I asked the dude across the way because he looked like he could lift some weight for a spot. That's my bike. I'm the dickhead for that one, right? Because I didn't even know him that well. 
I've never really seen bang weights. So I asked him, yo bro, can you give me a spot please? He's like, yeah, come, let's do this. So I told him exactly what I need him to do. I said, bro, I need you to guide me, right? When you start to see me buckle, that's when I need you to guide me because I'm trying to go down slowly into the negatives. So then I put my headphones in, boom, I curled it up. I got about a good one, right? I went down into the negatives, really feel that squeeze. Then I went up for it, I forced it up for another one. I got about a quarter of the way. And dare I say, he stood there for about a fucking 10 seconds and didn't do anything, right? I was saying, yo, help, man, help. I was fucking sitting there like a dickhead with the bar going <laughs> And he just stood there like a fucking dodo But it's safe to say I certainly won't be asking him for a fucking spot again if I ever see him in the gym I'm gonna ask someone who knows what the fuck they're doing <laughs> Because somebody who knows what they're doing Will let you fight with that weight for a bit but at the same time they'll guide you there and they'll put you in your place and say where you need to go lighter or where you need to where you can improve right whether that's your training partner who you come to the gym with or if you train alone and you ask big man over there because you've seen him bang weight and you know he's as strong as you or stronger than you that's the only time you should ask someone for a spot by the way if you're if you're in their weight class and they can bang weight like you or bang weight more than you then ask them for a spot and make sure they know what the fuck they're doing. All right, number eight, make use of vitamins, minerals, and supplements. So you see, as healthy eaters, right? I know we eat healthy and we're proud of ourselves. However, if you couldn't already guess, we don't get every single nutrient that we need just from eating alone, right? So this is where supplements come in and vitamins and minerals. So me personally, I feel like this is the bare necessities, right? The simple bare necessities. Anyway, back on track. So the necessities is vitamin D3, zinc and selenium, especially if you're a man, because it does contribute to good healthy testosterone levels. And before every big meal of the day, make sure you get a good multivitamin in you without iron, because men, we don't really need iron. So make sure you get a good multivitamin and try some omega-3 fish oils, and because those can contribute to raising your IGF-1, which can contribute into abolishing body fat. And if we're talking supplements, things like whey protein, obviously it's not a necessity, right? However, it just helps you in meeting your protein requirements. You can still get most of your protein from your, from your meals and all your food, but supplementing along the way is, is protein powder and protein shakes and things of that nature. So make use of, the, of those supplements. And also, don't, not, not to forget, things like creatine as well, right? Meat, like, you know, meat like beef has natural creatine in it, but at the same time, you wanna supplement more creatine in you as well before you train. And out there, there's also a lot of natural, good, healthy, testosterone-boosting supplements out there, which you can get things like raw orchid extracts, cordyceps, rhodiola, tyrosine, things of that nature. So definitely make sure you're making use of your vitamins, minerals and supplements. All right, number nine, get you some kick-ass gym clothes. Now, it might sound a bit mad, but I'm being serious, man, because me personally, as you can see here, on chest day, when I'm doing chest shoulders, when I'm doing my push day, I like to wear a stringer that's cut slightly low on the chest so I can see my chest working when I'm training chest. And on back day, I, as you can see here, I like to wear a cut off that's cut really low on my lats. So when I'm training back, I can see my lats working. And like for leg day, I always wear shorts as well. So obviously I can see my quads, I can see my hands working. In short, make sure you get you some gym clothes that when you put them on, it makes you look in the mirror and be like, damn, I fucking look good, man. I look like I'm really gonna go hit a workout now. This actually motivates me. Yeah, because shit, you know, good gym clothes will actually motivate you because, you know, when you look good in them, it makes you want to put in that work even more. So, look into that. All right, number 10, don't neglect hypertrophy. Now, if you've gone the other way, compared to what I was talking about in point number four, as in not neglecting compound movements, you can't neglect hypertrophy either. Because, okay, so for instance, if you're a powerlifter or 
uh, a strong man. I'll give you a pass. But if you're training just every day, you know, for, for your general health and to look good in and out of clothes, right? Don't neglect hypertrophy because, like I said, this is where you're really gonna start to see gains coming through, and you're really gonna start to see that muscle building happening in you. You feel me? Like also, this is where your ego comes back into play as well because there's no point just picking up weight just for the sake of picking it up. You feel me? So. There's no point in that. You need hypertrophy as well. So do not neglect that. All right, number 11. I've run out of hands to count with. All right, number 11. Cardio has its importance. All right, let's just say this now, right? If your goal is to build muscle and get in the weights room and start, and you know, be a weightlifter, lift weights, right? You don't want to go out there and start jogging, right? Because that's catabolic cardio, and that's not muscle friendly. That's where your gains will start wasting away if you do cardio like that. However, if you do fast paced cardio, or in other words, HIIT cardio, it's more muscle friendly, it's more metabolic, right? That's when you'll, that's when you'll really get peeled. I say if your goal is trying to cut as much fat as possible, that's when you start getting peeled, right? HIIT cardio, for me personally, is when I started getting peeled the most. Now, oh, just a quick comparison as well. Say if you look at people like Mo Farah, for instance, right? He's a long distance, you know, endurance runner. He does all that, the marathons and, and shit like that, right? And I'm not dissing him, but you see how skinny the man is, right? And if your goal's to start lifting weights, then you don't really want to be like Mo Farah, do you? So, no. And if you was to compare him to Usain Bolt, right? He's not big by any stretch of the imagination. However, if you look at him, he's got, he's, he's built like, he's got muscle definition. If he was to start lifting weights, he'd be fucking wham because he's got a good frame to work off of. Because what he does is very fast paced. But it's like, because like, obviously I think he's got natural fast twitch muscles. So like for you as well, if you're doing your cardio fast, fast paced, like quick interval on off on off and take a rest you know just circuit 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 that's when you'll start to see results right me personally what i do i'm not even going to spend time telling you i'm just going to show you in three two one go Raider. And after I'm done with them three exercises, I take a rest. I catch up with my breath. I don't chase my breath. I, I spend the time to catch up with my breath, right? Have a little bit of water, calm down, and then hit it again for about two more sets. I do maximum four sets of that. I, I don't do any more than four. Like, there's no need to do too much, right? That might not look like much, but trust me, you do that, you'll fucking know about it, bro. So, like I said, cardio has its importance. Number 12. Don't skip leg day. Seriously, man. Like, you might, you can look at all the bro signs you want, right? Leg day has its utmost importance. It seriously has helped me in my upper body, strength and conditioning. For the longest time in the past, I avoided legs like the plague, right? And I wondered why I didn't have very much good gains in my upper body. And I started banging legs and seriously, it has helped me. It is my fat, like, cause like, legs is your foundation, right? So, there's no more to be said to it. Don't skip your legs, man. Seriously. All right, number 13. This one fucking grinds my gears. Don't stand there wasting time at the gym, talking and wasting time and doing all this bullshit, right? There's nothing grinds my gears more than, I'll give you a real life example, right? The other, just the other day, 
I wanted to do, you know, tricep underhanded pull downs, push downs with the bar, right? And I asked a couple dudes across the way, how long have you got left with it? Because I wanted to take it over to a different machine, because that's where I was working. And he said one more set. I was like, okay, cool. Let me go over to where I'm going over to because I've got my equipment around there and let me set up. About five, six, dare I say, seven minutes pass. And these two guys are still fucking standing there. Like they pitched the tent and they're fucking camping there. They set up the, they're sitting around the campfire doing dumb bullshit, wasting time. What? They're eating into my time, mind you, right? I'm fucking waiting on them. And if you're out there doing that, don't be surprised when you get clunked off your head with a dumbbell. Don't stand there wasting time. You can have a little bit of banter, right? There's nothing wrong with a little bit of banter having a laugh in the gym, right? But don't waste time talking when there's other people waiting on you especially, so don't do that. You'll, you'll see a lot more gains, trust me. Alright, number 14. Have fun in the process. Like seriously, like if you come into the weight room, and bear in mind I do see this more often than one would think. So if you're going to come to the weight room, face like a smacked ass while, while you're doing your workouts, then what's the fucking point? You feel me? And you might figure out somewhere down the line that you don't like weightlifting, right? And if you don't like weightlifting, what are you doing it for? Why don't you go and play badminton? Why are you going to play tennis? Why are you going to play football? As long as you're exercising, right? As long as whatever you're doing, you actually have fun with it, then, you know, there, there's a point to it. There's no point if you're not having any fun, right? However, this video, we're talking about weightlifting, right? So, find the fun in coming to the gym, right? Have fun in the process. Me, personally, every time I go to the gym, I get the same feeling as going to the playground when I was six. You know, if you're into bodybuilding, who remembers what Arnold said? It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is, you know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. And so can you believe how much I am in heaven? I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym, I'm getting the feeling of coming at home, I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, when I pose out in front of 5,000 people, I get the same feeling. So I'm coming day and night. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> you know that having a pump feels like bussing a nut, and it does for real. Having a pump is as good as bussing a nut, right, with a beautiful woman. Having a pump is pleasure, right? So you need to get to that point and find the fun in it, right? Because if you can't find the fun in it, then what's the point? So do that, man. Have fun in the process. And finally, number 15, get motivated as fuck. What does this mean? That means anything, right? That means what it means to you. Whether you get motivated through watching like bodybuilding motivation before you hit the gym. Whether you get motivated by your training partner. Whether you get motivated by the music in your earphones, right? Find what that is for you. Me personally, I like to watch a few like comedic fitness channels while I'm on the shitter having a coffee shit because you know I have my coffee before I go to the gym, right? So when I'm on the can, I like to watch a little something like you know gym and fitness related, right? Because I don't know, it just gets me in the mood. So whatever that means to you, like I say, whether you want to watch some bodybuilding motivation, whether it's through your music, whether it's through whatever, right? Get motivated as fuck. Or it could be through your clothing as well. What you put on can motivate you. And you look in the mirror and think, damn, I'm about to fucking smash it, right? That's one thing I always tell someone who wants to build muscle, right? Is, you know, I can't find that motivation for you. You have to dig down deep and find what it is for you that gets you, gets you motivated, right? Gets you on your Ronnie Coleman shit. You know, you just look at the weights and go like, lightweight baby! Lightweight baby! Yeah! 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 You know, just whatever gets you there, man. Get motivated as fuck. And there you have it for my top 15 muscle building tips. Right? Now this channel specifically is not a is not a fitness, not a muscle building, it's not a bodybuilding channel, right? I just felt like talking some smack on something I know about and something I'm passionate about, right? And this is more of a commentary channel, right? This is more about entertainment. However, I will do a little lifestyle sort of video 
you know, sort of tips, that kind of thing. If you guys ever want to know, Samson, how did you get so strong? Samson, how did you get so handsome? Samson, how do you fuck so many bitches, right? Get down below in the comments and let me know. You know, anytime, bro, you get me. Oh, anyway, all jokes aside, dog, guys, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. Go ahead and follow my Instagram at SamsonXTheGuy. Get down in the comments, give me any questions, suggestions for what you might want to see next. If you've got any inquiries about anything, don't hesitate to send me an email. You can find it link down below. And don't forget to like, ding the notification bell, and subscribe to Samson X for that fire content. That's it for me for now, and until next time, hang loose.